Yeah. What I hear a lot from clients is, why should I take any risk in this environment mm -hmm. when cash deposit gives me 5% return? Uh, there's a number of reasons why, you know, you, you can still get 5% deposit return, but if you buy two years government bonds, it's uh, something recommended uh, in our latest outlook, and I still think it's valid. I think it's almost impossible to lose money in two-year government bonds. Uh, but, but more importantly, we think that uh, right now is a time where you uh, sort of become a little bit conservative. Mm -hmm. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for coming to another episode of the QA Semester. Today, we are very happy to have uh, Stein Jacobson, our uh, Chief Investment Officer of Saxo Bank. Thank you, Stein, for coming to our show. Thank you for having me. Stein, I think uh, we, we talked about uh, that you are quite pessimistic about the current state of the economy, global economy, and also the investment uh, uh, environment, but you are at the same time very optimistic, also very optimistic about the future. So, can you explain a little bit, you know, how that will out? Yeah, when when I do speeches on macro, I, I like to say that I have uh, two speeches for you. Uh, one is very negative with a very small upside, and one is super negative with a very big upside. And and what I'm trying to address there is that. The most likely scenario from here onwards is that we will have another cycle of pretend and extend. So in other words, we are going to pretend to do something about the problem, but are not doing anything. Mm -hmm. And we extend it by buying time. I think we're in that phase because as we register the market and look at the market, the fallout in inflation uh, on the interest rate side is pretty, pretty dramatic. And we're probably reaching a point where we are close to illiquidity. But the problem with that is that it only leaves a very small upside because we already at very high valuations in terms of stock markets. We have very high housing prices. We have full employment already. So it's very difficult to see how that translates into a, you know, 10 year, a decade worth of, of gig returns. The other scenario is one which, you know, uh, the famous economist Schumpeter calls sort of uh, the, the, the constructive uh, destruction. And that, that is really, in, in layman's term, is really about re-engaging the business cycle. Since 98, the central banks and the politicians has not allowed the global economy to go into a proper recession. And a recession in economic terms is like a forest fire. Yes, it burns down everything, but it creates sort of a fertile ground from which to grow. And that fertile ground will be based on price discovery, i.e. the market will dictate the prices, not the central banks. But what we see right now is that bigger government hand, it's more regulation, and it's a uh, backdrop where the politician and the uh, central banks are unwilling to even engage in talking about tax hikes, which are needed to fund the massive deficit they run. So, you know, the fact that we already have full employment, uh, most uh, globally, the fact that we run huge fiscal deficit and no end in sight in terms of trying to control that, I think it's pretty clear to me, either we break something, and maybe this is exactly the breaking point we're at, or we need to have an intervention by the market. And I think it's important for everyone to know that uh, the majority of, the, of rate cuts that we've seen in the US since 98 has been driven by the market's illiquidity, not a recession, because basically we haven't allowed recession to happen. Yep. So you, you're mentioning about that seems that there's something that's going to, uh, to break. Can you elaborate a little more? Is that, uh, have you been seeing, already seeing some sign of something has been breaking or and what actually are the things probably most likely to be broken? Yeah, so, so you know, as we have had 23 pass by, it's pretty clear that we've seen something breaking in the green transformation mm -hmm. in, the, in, in, in that sector. That was one of the most valuable and, and ESG became the go-to sort of, uh, corporate action that we saw and, and the way to to engage with the clients, but uh, it was all based on negative real rates. Uh, and, and that is now changed to positive real rates, which put the owners on the uh, on, on the ability of creating productivity, because when you have very much debt, you have a higher marginal cost of capital, let's call it 8% cost of capital in the US, then you need to have embedded into that a very high productivity. Because in other words, if you have zero interest rate, you can make 190 hamburger stands down on the street and make them profitable looking because 
Of course, when you take a cash flow and divide it close to zero, it's infinity valuations. Whereas if you have an 8 to 9% uh, discounting rate, you need more input in terms of real changes, real solution to the, uh, to the real economy. Uh, which sectors or what kind of industry you think that that will, that will be benefiting most uh, or doing the best in this kind of transition or who are enhancing productivity in the future? So I, I think it, it's, it's, it's very interesting that if you look at the S&P 500, we have 90% of the assets being in intangible, yeah. so fussy air and, and IPs, and only 10% intangibles. Um, you know, Every technology uh, wizard would tell you that they are in the game of productivity, but I think uh, to not just because I'm old, but also practically, I think it's really just killing time and uh, you know whether I can get my underwear delivered one or two days before uh, relatively to what it was is not proper productivity. Mm -hmm. Proper productivity sits in the real economy, meaning better internet, better infrastructure, better school system, more heavy investment in, in basic research and all this. And, and, and what we are trying to say is actually is that, you know, why, why don't we invest in what is actually the solution to the problem we have today? Inequality, high inflation, productivity, supply uh, constraints. If you use the metric of productivity saying we're only going to engage in conversation and investment that are built by productivity and by definition, productivity is a process by which you put less in than you get out. That is the definition. So you cannot lose money as long as you invest in, in productivity stocks. And what are productivity stocks, of course, is what you want to know. And that is, in our opinion, and has been for the last two years, cybersecurity. It's defense spending, unfortunately, the security issue every country wants to, to elevate. It is energy and mining. It is the super component uh, involved in, in doing solution and creating solution for a better world in terms of energy transmission. Uh, it's uh, it's um, semiconductors, uh, clearly it's logistics, but all of these, and I will even argue super cybersecurity sits in the real world. Why? Because it is actually the protection. It's a little bit like having an receptionist or a, a guard standing outside your building. Uh, so, so to a large extent, I find that to be a tangible asset. So I think for our investors, we, we recommend that they, one, they, that they, one, they join up and become part of the, the, the solution. And that is to to engage in the ten uh, percent, which is the tangible economy. If we get to a point ten years from now where the tangible economy has moved from whatever ten percent now to fifteen twenty percent, we'll be in a much better place mm -hmm. on inflation, on inequality, but most importantly, we'll be able to raise all the bows at the same time in terms of the economic spectrum. During this process, and when the risk of a sticky inflation when the fiscal deficit is still such a uh, uh, risk to the whole economy and how investors can diversify or can protect themselves or discover risk or the, like the you know, huge fiscal deficit loss you know, that's coming to the market and so when interest rate is still high, how are, they, how are they going to protect themselves in their portfolio? Yeah, so uh, you know, what I hear a lot from clients is, why should I take any risk in this environment mm -hmm. when cash deposit gives me 5% return? Uh, there's a number of reasons why, you know, you, you can still get 5% deposit return, but if you buy two years government bonds, mm -hmm. it's just something recommended uh, in our latest outlook, and I still think it's valid. I think it's almost impossible to lose money in two-year government bonds. Mm -hmm. Uh, but, but more importantly, we think that uh, right now is a time where you uh, sort of become a little bit conservative. Mm -hmm. um, J.P. Morgan famously said that in 1912 in front of Congress that uh, gold is money, everything mm -hmm. else is paper. I think Saxo's version 2023, and, and not trying to say that we are J.P. Morgan, uh, the, the man himself, but we, we will probably say gold and uh, energy is uh, money, everything else is paper. I think that's reflected in, in the basket, the sort of allocation we just talked about, but also as our generic sort of way of thinking about the world, we think there is in a world with fiscal dominance, which means the big deficit, big deficit means the huge issue of debt. The fiat money system is based on trust. Mm -hmm. uh, and you probably know what it says on a $1 note in the US. Yeah, yeah in God we trust. In God we trust. So you got to be religious. Uh, that's the only collateral you get from from uh, from from the fiat money system, 
And I think not just uh, us old guys, but I think generally the market is looking for assets that are tangible. So it reverses back to our overweight into tangible assets, but also something you can touch and feel. And nothing is more tangible than gold in this kind of environment. And of course, we've seen the price reaction on that. And then secondly, uh, we, we think energy, as I just alluded to, is critical because everything you and I have done, Redmond, today, tomorrow, and the next two years, the next lifetime, is going to have huge amount of energy into it. There's a reason why your I iPhone or Samsung phone is getting bigger. It's not because it's night or smart. It's simply because your demand on, on apps uh, creates demands on the electricity that is in excess of the uh, uh, phone uh, supplier's ability to actually increase the, su the supply. So, so we are always constantly, as a, hu a human race, we are short electricity, which means we are short energy. So, so I think that, that those, of course, are long-term uh, themes. But, but for now, I think. Uh, they are the ones that do well, and 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 by, by functionality, if we raises the, uh, the the tangible, we will also have, again go to go to a better place. Yeah, thanks, Dean. I think that wraps up very well of our today's our discussion. And thank you everyone for joining us in this episode of the QS Investors. And we look forward to seeing you again in the in the next one uh, in the coming week. <laughs>